Hello all and welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Susan Malloy of Silver Lady Stamping and I am also an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I want to thank you again for joining me today for our, what's going to be a cute and actually pretty simple card featuring the All About Autumn designer series paper and the uh, playful uh, rain stamp set and dies. But I know you're probably thinking, oh, the All About Autumn uh, designer series paper is out of stock. And right now, uh, today is um, Friday, October uh, 21st. No, that's tomorrow. <laughs> today is Friday, October 20th, 2023. The uh, designer series paper is in fact still out of stock, but is expected to be back in stock on the week of October 30th, which is the uh, week after next. So fortunately it is coming back. So it has been reordered, Stampin' Up! has reordered it and it is coming back into stock. So I feel comfortable uh, being showing you this card because you will be able to get the paper if you don't already have it um, on hand and because of the fact that it's out of stock I'm thinking that there are many of you out there that do have it on hand so this is the card it's a fall it's a cute little fall card right I just thought that and I thought the paper was perfect uh, for this design so the little bunny is flying a kite um, so I'm going to flip the camera and we'll get right to it. So here's another view of the card. So, uh, and it, as you can see, it just prominently features the paper and it just makes putting this card together so easy. So the particular sheet that I'm going to use is this one. There wasn't, there's another sheet that I've already used up all four sheets of it, um, it has a path um, in, in the woods. That one was so cute. And I used up all that paper making this card for my card class a couple of weeks ago. So my ladies at my class loved making it. They thought it was just a, such a fun card. And I would have, I wish that I had another piece of that particular paper because it was really perfect. But then I saw this sheet I still have like four of them um, that I thought would be perfect to also make this card so that's what I'm going to do but you can pretty much well not use any of them because you're not going to use the library well you might be able to use an aerial view of the woods maybe um, there's still lots of Paper. I mean, you can just kind of play around with it and, and come up with your own idea of it. It doesn't have to be a woodsy, the woodsy theme. But that's what I decided to do with for this particular card that we're going to do today. So I'm just going to pull that out of the pack. And the other thing is that on the reverse side, if you don't have this paper, what I love is on the reverse side, it has this great design. It's sort of a distressed design. And there are different colors. This is copper clay. This is, I don't know what that color is, but I'll, I'll have to, let me see what color is on the back. Uh, let's see, the coordinating colors, Cajun Craze, Copper Clay, Crushed Curry, Early Espresso, Moody Mauve, Mossy Meadow, pretty, oh, that's Pretty Peacock. Uh, pretty Peacock, Pumpkin Pie, and Very Vanilla. Lots of coordinating colors, right? Um, so again, that one, copper clay again, um, mossy meadow, let's see, oh yeah, moody mauve. So the reverse side of this distressed paper, that's a beautiful one for with uh, pretty peacock. So nice, so many uh, possibilities, absolutely love it. Uh, just quickly before we get started on the card, this was another card I made with that pack, a simple, simple card. Um, all I did was cut it, let's see, this was four, and I cut it at five inches wide and um, 
five and a half down. So then what you'll do is you just, um, you wanna just score it at four and a quarter as you normally would. But when you cut it at, no, this is five and a quarter across, right? Let me just double check. So, all right, so this is probably um, six and a quarter across. So I was wrong on both, yeah, both scores. So six and a quarter across. And then I scored it at two inches, right? So just scored it at two inches and then folded it over and added some layers of designer series paper. Now, these pieces were really from uh, a paper pumpkin a couple of months ago um, from September. No, not September, or maybe it was September. Um, and that's what I put on it. But you could, you know, cut the uh, pieces out of this designer series paper, like one of those sheets. Just absolutely love this paper. Um, and then another, um, then I made this card using the sweater designer series paper from that same pack. And um, used some, used the uh, All About Autumn uh just coordinating dies, the little dies to make these, uh, these little ones and just uh, put them across. So the paper is just so versatile and it's so pretty. I just love using it. Um, all right, so I'm starting then. Now this one I used Cajun Craze for the card base, but because it had a lot of Cajun craze in the um, in the leaves. But on this one, I think I'm gonna use some copper clay. So I'm gonna set this card aside. So I'm using a card base of copper clay and I'm doing it this way, but you can do it the other way as well. Um, but to make a card base uh, this way that opens this way, you would wanna cut it at four and a quarter um, by 11 and you wanna score it at five and a half. And then that will give you two card bases for each of your um, eight and a half by 11 sheets of cardstock. So that's how you would cut this one. And then I'm using two pieces of basic white cut at five and a quarter by four. One is gonna be for the front, one will be for the inside. And then I'm going to cut this piece, this piece um, at uh, five inches by three and three quarters. So if we're gonna layer these, then we need this piece to be a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. Now these sheets are all six by six. So I'm going to cut this at five because I want it to be five inches long. I'm gonna just go ahead and cut it from the bottom. And so when you're, whenever you're cutting designer series paper like this, you have to figure out, you have to decide for yourself what part of the paper you want to be featured and what part are you okay with cutting away. So this needs to be three and three quarters across. So, I wanna preserve most of what's on this side and some of the sunshine, but not all of it. So I'm gonna flip the paper upside down and cut it at three and three quarters. Mm, maybe I won't cut it. Oh yeah, I think I will. I think I'll go ahead and do that. And that will be the piece that we're going to use. Beautiful, right? The coloration is so pretty. Now. I'm going to hold on to this piece and this piece that I cut away um, because I'm, I have to decide what I wanna put for the inside. So for the inside of this one, I kept a little piece and put it at the bottom. I could, when we get to the end, do it along the side. Well, no, that's not cut long enough, but I could put this piece across the bottom, or I could do that across the bottom. That would be interesting, right? Okay, 
Well, we'll have a decision to make. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start layering. Now, I usually use liquid glue. Um, I'm going to today use um, Stamp and Seal. I have spotty results when it comes to using the tape runner. I know how to use the tape runner and all that, but sometimes, well, I don't know if this is starting to run out. It looks like it might be, so I might end up switching back to liquid glue, but there are times that when the runner goes right off the track and is impossible to get back on the track, and so I get frustrated. But when it works properly, I really like it. All right, so I am going to just put some, and we'll see how long this lasts because, like I said, I think it's running out and I don't have a uh, refill on hand because I wasn't sure if I was going to order the refill. So, but I think I will. So we'll just lay this on. Again, this, this layer is five and a quarter by four. Okay, and then we will put this one on as well, five by three and three quarters. It's almost a shame, isn't it, to have to put adhesive across, you know, it's, it's like you have to choose which side you wanna use. This is such pretty paper, but you have to choose. With the designer series paper that's, you know, that I, I think that Stampin' Up! has really outdone themselves when it comes to the new photographic types paper that they're putting out um, because there's it, it's just so realistic. Um, and you don't really have to add too, too much to it. I mean, you could literally just tie a ribbon around it, put a sentiment label on it and be done and it would be beautiful. But I'm going to add some um, elements to it. And let's see, let me get, move my stuff around because I did do some um, pre-stamping to make things a little bit easier. So I already stamped the little rabbit, but I am going to do a little bit of, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of coloring. So I'm going to make the, I'm going to put, use some uh, light bubble bath, um, use some pumpkin pie, dark, dark and light for his coat. And I'm using smoky slate, which is going to be for his, the rest, you know, for his body and, and the outside of his ears. So I'm gonna start with some, the light bubble bath. And I'm gonna just color the, just do a little bit of coloring. And you know what, if you don't have bubble bath, Maybe you have Flirty Flamingo, so maybe you could, you know, I've used Flirty Flamingo uh, for pink coloration, so uh, that would be fine. So really, that's it. That's as much I'm gonna as I'm going to use with the with the um, bubble bath. Now uh, for his, let's see, I want to use light. Oh, that's the dark one. I'm going to use the light. Smoky slate for his ears. You could use, um, now for this one, I think I used for my cart, I think I used uh, crumb cake. So I made them um, sort of more like a jackrabbit. But um, for this one, I'm using, I'm making them gray. More like just one of the wild rabbits that you see in your yard. And I'm no kind of a fancy colorer, so I'm just filling it in with just some wide strokes. Color in his little paws and his lower body. And then we'll use the dark smoky slate just to do a little bit of um, shading. Okay, so that's it for the light smoky slate. 
All right. So I'm just going to go around the uh, edges. Just to add a little bit of shading. You can see. Kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. Makes it a little bit more um, 3D. Okay, now I'm going to bring the light smoky slate back in and go over it and just kind of smooth out the edges. There we go. So he's got a little bit of shading just around the edges. Let me, um, let me see if I can get a little closer because I realize I am a bit far away. Kind of hard to keep track, right? All right, so now I'm going to use some uh, light pumpkin pie for his jacket. I mean, it is fall. So let's put um, some pumpkin pie jacket on him. And again, we're going to do a little bit of um, coloring just around the edges, just to um, make it stand out a little bit more. Like that. And that's, that's all we need to do for the little bunny. Pretty simple, right? I mean, believe me when I tell you I'm no kind of a colorer. All right, and so this little guy, we're going to just pop him up on some dimensionals and then we'll, we'll put him at the bottom where he's kind of doing a happy dance because he's happy that he's flying his kite on a windy fall day. Okay. Now, I think I'll get some mini dimensionals for those spots where, you know, they're just too small to accommodate a, a larger dimensional. Put a couple of them there. And I'll put a couple on this ear. Press it down a little bit so that when you peel the back off, it doesn't take the whole dimensional off. Okay. Just two more. One, and last one. Okay. Now I'm going to, so I'm just going to put his foot, because his this foot is sticking up in the air. All right, I'm just going to put him right about there. See, so already it's like coming together because, you know, he's standing in the woods. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I want to just take it out just a teeny bit. Okay, so now he's already, you know, looking pretty good out there. So I also caught a, um, a kite that comes in the playing in the rain dies. Comes with um, the kite. 
And it also comes with, and here's the little bunny uh, die. And this die right here is I cut, um, let's see, cut three of these for the little bows on the kite. And I cut those from copper clay, I think. So for the kite, I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on the back, but then I'm just going to put a tiny amount of glue along the tail. I'm going to use some uh, mini, well, no, maybe I can just use two, right? Um, just maybe one. I don't really need a lot of dimensionals. Okay, and... And I'm going to use liquid glue for the tail. Oops. And I am going to... Oh, of course, I put it on backwards. Isn't that funny? All right, so it's supposed to go the other way, but that's all right. I'll just make it go this way. So I'm putting, oh, let me put some more glue on it. Okay, so I want, I want the tail to be in his hand, so I'm going to just attach it to his hand, and then the, um, the kite, will just be flying in that direction. Okay, there we go. Now we have the little bows that go along the kite. Now I'm going, I think what I'm gonna do is use my take your pick tool. Uh, wherever I put it, here it is because it has the putty end, and these are really small. So I just wanna pick it up in order to put a tiny amount of liquid glue. Oops, I'm out of camera, sorry about that. Tiny bit of liquid glue, and I'm gonna put it right, right at the base of the kite. And let's see. And then I have three of these. And third one. There we go. When you're working with small pieces, oh, it can be so challenging, which is why the take your pick tool is such a great tool to have on hand because the putty end will pick up your piece and hold it in place while you attach some glue to it. So I love it. It's a must have in my craft room. Well, which is actually my kitchen table. <laughs> I'm not fortunate to have a separate room to do my crafting, which is like a lot of people have an extra room, but I'm, unfortunately I don't, and I do my crafting right at my kitchen table. So if you don't have a craft room, then you and I are in the same boat. But you know what, you make it work. And I'm actually fine with that. I make it work. All right, so, see I'm just rubbing the glue off my hands. That's what I'm doing right now. All right, so for this, and really, and so that's, 
kind of it, except for the sentiment. So I'm using, um, let's see, you know what I used was, Autumn teaches us that change can be beautiful. And that, that's such a nice sentiment. But I think what I'm going to do instead, and this is a dye from the All About Autumn Leaves uh, dies, but I, so I think what I'm going to do instead of that sentiment is say, use the Oh Happy Day from the um, Playing in the Rain stamp set. Yep, that'll fit. I like it. Just getting a block. Okay, and I'm going to use copper clay ink. We're getting close to the end. Okay, let's see how this goes. Let me move this out of the way and move this up. Nope, a little wonky, but that's all right. That's how it goes sometimes, right? With with card making, we sometimes we're sometimes a little wonky. So somebody I know is gonna um, get this, and they'll be fine with it. Somebody in my family will get it. I was just trying to get it without putting my head uh, under the camera and that's why I didn't get it exactly centered. But you know how it is. All right, let me take these backings off. And I'm gonna put this right over here. And then, let's see, I do have um, some gem dots that might be good for this. And it would be, um, these are the adhesive back speckle dots. So these might work. These might work, but let's see what else I have in my little drawer of gem dots. Yeah, I think that might be the only ones I have that might work best. So, again, I'm gonna pull my um, take your pick tool and pull off a couple of these babies and put it right on the sentiment label. I'm going to do three. And I'll put one down here. Now, for the inside, um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave the inside blank in terms of sentiments because not every card needs to have a sentiment. And I, what I'm gonna do is just cut this piece at four inches. And put it at the bottom. And I'm gonna use my tape runner. Have that. And just tack that in. And I can put whatever, now I can put pretty much whatever sentiment I want. So, oh, happy day can be, um, you know, a happy birthday, or it could be happy fall, could be any of that. So, um, 
came together pretty quickly, I think, don't you? I mean, it, it, and it's super fun. That paper, like I said, the All About Autumn Designer Series paper will be back in stock the week of October 30th. And for those of you who don't, who might not have purchased it or um, who need to purchase more because you used yours up, then it, it is coming back. So I was very happy to hear that. So I want to just thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this card. I hope that you will make it. And please tune in again because I have more cards. Let me just show you like a sneak peek of one of a Christmas card that I'm using with the new Deckle Circle dies. It's a rocker card. So it rocks back and forth. And it's the Rocking Horse um, stamp set and dies. Um, and the rug under here, that's from the Lazy Days uh, stamp set that I, and I just fussy cut it because I just felt like the Rocking Horse needed to be anchored and not look like it was just floating in midair. So this is one that I'm going to do a uh, video on. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, another stamp set that I am absolutely loving is the, um, the owls. So I'll show you a few of what I'm working on. So this is one that I made. Here's another one, and this one I cased from the uh, catalog. So there's that one. Uh, let me take it out a little. Oh, I meant to go the other direction. Okay, so there those, and then there's this one. Beautiful, right? Just such, such a pretty one. And then here's the piece to resist on. So honestly, I had so much fun with this one. It's a Harry Potter card. Do you not just think that it's hilarious? So um, the Hogwarts castle, I mean, if you're not a Harry Potter fan, okay, I know you don't, it, you don't get it, you know, but for those who have read the books, seen the movies, enjoyed it, um, the Hogwarts uh, School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, I die cut those from the treats and whatever it is. Anyway, the Halloween dies and I die cut three of them and put, put them at different heights. That's, if that's not Hedwig, I don't know what is. Um, from the owl uh, dies in that set, I cut a circle from the moon and then also took the owl wings. There's a, there's a die for just owl wings and then I cut it down and I created a, sn a, a, a snitch, a golden snitch from the Quidditch game and then cut a tree from the same set and made it into a Quidditch broom, flying broom. Uh, the eyeglasses are from the bird's eye view stamp set, so I had to fussy cut those. And then, oh, what is the paper? I forget, we have paper that has the, uh, designer series paper that has the letters in it. Um, and I just spelled out Harry Potter. I had so much fun making this card. I have no idea who I'm going to give it to. <laughs> I may end up just keeping it. Um, and then for the inside, I used from Bird's Eye View um, the uh, books and then eyeglasses. And then for the, I just wrote in there the, on the books, Wizardry, Dark Arts, and, Dark Arts and Quidditch. <laughs> I thought that was fun. So these are um, things that I've been working on. Um, and then as far as another rocker card, I made one that is a birthday card. So I have this one that is the rocking horse. And then this one uh, is a birthday card. And this is from the silver and gold adhesive backed uh, glimmer paper that is only available in the online exclusives. Super, super easy to use. Just die cut it um, with the I just wanted to say sentiments, which I took the happy birthday sentiment out of that one. Die cut it from that paper, peeled the backing off, slapped it onto the card and boom, done, right? So I'll do uh, something on that one too, but these are just so cute because they rock.
right? They're just adorable. So that's what I've been working on. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, here are my two cards that I did. And I, I hope that you will tune in again the next time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye for now.